One of the tips I like is I have my three most important objectives for the year on a visual, a little poster of, is it about this, this, or this? Those three things are right behind my computer monitor. So I'm always able to say, well, you know, does this advance one of my three? So revisit your objectives and get really connected to what matters most. When there's a task that someone's coming to you with, and you know that it's not the best use of your time, or at least it's not the best use of your time right now, rather than just giving them the like, no, because we're all for boundaries, but we want to establish those boundaries in ways that make sense and communicate them effectively. So your options, give them a not worth it, uh, a not yet, a not me, a not all of it, or a not unless. When we have um, greater empathy, we're gonna have less drama. And I know that sounds, counterintuitive that, oh, if I make space for emotions, aren't I going to get the oh, drama and the gossip and the whining? No, because emotions turn to drama when they don't have a healthy outlet, when people kind of enable them um, and, and don't work through them. So when we can empathize and understand that emotions are there, but help somebody to work through them, we get less drama. If you're feeling low energy or you want to maintain your energy, take the time to declutter. Um, we don't even know that clutter is having that effect on our brains, but it absolutely is. So, you know, find uh, at least a safe space. There may be other places, uh, you know, other places in your house, other places at the office that you haven't got to where you need them. But, you know, if I can turn this way at my desk and the clutter is behind me and I can just have a space here where everything is really sterile and clean, that can really um, help us. It is really valuable when you are feeling low energy to have a bit of a motor release. And again, this is when you can do in the middle of a meeting. Um, my favorite is Silly Putty. Silly Putty available for like two bucks on Amazon. Um, and squeezing Silly Putty, or, you know, we've all seen the stress balls or, or whatever it is. Um, that low level of motor activity can really help you pay attention. The most important step when you have competing priorities is to focus. <laughs> it is so important that when you get in that state, the tendency is to actually kind of try and do everything at once to get really frazzled. And it, as your thought load goes up, they're like, ah, your workload comes down, your productivity comes down. So the best thing when you can do when you have three six, 10 things all facing you is to do one with ruthless focus. Focus and flow. This is my favorite time of the week. This is when I can actually get my work done, whether it's an output report for a client or writing my next blog post. I need think time and I need time when I can work for me I like to have that time be about three hours, at least a couple of times a week where I can be writing. Prune your calendar, open up your calendar, look what's there and figure out what can you delete or delegate to somebody else. Where can you actually, you know, go to less of a meeting? You say, I'm going to come for the first half hour, but not the whole thing. Um, are there things that you have volunteered to do that now you want to say, mm, I'm not sure that's a great use of my time anymore, or that's draining my energy. Try to prune back what's in your calendar as much as possible before you start adding things. If you want to work efficiently and effectively, well, make sure you go prepared into meetings. Make sure you streamline your communications with your colleagues. Make sure you shut down gossip and say that you are not that safe person to just waste time venting with. Um, try and stick to one task at a time. And of course, if something is just a throughput document, make it cheap and cheerful. The thing that's just enough that you can actually imagine doing it. Pick one thing off your list uh, and just start to get a tiny bit of momentum. And it can be something very, very silly. It can just be, you know, I'm going to read 10 emails and just decide which are the three I have to respond to. You don't even have to have responded, but just starting to create some momentum will be extremely valuable. All right, other tips on how to be more productive at work? Check it out.